launch here of Wind Naturally in Oxford in, in, in London. Um, talk, talk to me about some of these products because it's been a long time in the making, hasn't it? Wind Naturally. Yeah. Well, and how did it first come about your company? Well, it was uh, it was my wife's brainchild really. She was uh, to cut a long story short. She was. When we had Isabella, she she was she was ill for a long time afterwards, and, and she decided to make a change in her life. Took it, you know, took out everything uh, that wasn't natural, uh, that was unnatural. Took out uh, tablets, medicines, uh, and went totally natural with everything she did. And she found that it was it was it, it actually got her back to full full fitness and strength. And uh, she realised then that she you know she be, she read about things and she learned and she, it became her passion. And then she thought, well, if it makes me feel this good. I can make other people feel this good too, and uh, basically she, for I'd say for two years, she she totally uh, studied and, and and found products that, that helped her and uh, and helped me as well. So uh, so she decided to set up a company, and and because she found that other people were interested in her views, and uh, that's how it came about. And to have a to have a concession in a, a store like Selfridges is. To be fair, it's, it's testament to Julie's hard work. Really. And Phil, as a family, I know you test some of the products yourself. What's, what's that like? Do you had yeah. any good, bad experiences? Well, no, no, to be honest with you, I, I was like everyone else. I was a bit sceptical at the start because, you know, when she puts chocolate in front of me, you know, you want a Mars bar or a Kit Kat or if you, if, if you want an energy drink, you want a Lucasade that, because that's what you stereotype, that's what people do. But I then realised that, uh, that these things are actually just as nice, more healthier and... Uh, a better for me and, and more natural and uh, you know like I say it's been uh, it's totally changed my uh, I, I, I say health uh, look but it, it's, it's it's kept me fit it's, it's I'm lean I'm, I'm 36 I'm still playing football and uh, a lot of that is down to the change in uh, in, in my diet uh, and Phil since you started playing football and and, and now as well um, how has um, nutrition sports nutrition changed since you've been footballer well it, it's, it's like night and day really I, I was telling somebody the other day that my first uh, my first game at Old Trafford for the youth team, my pre-match re- meal was fish, chips and mushy peas. Uh, if I had that now, I would have thought the sports scientists had probably find me a week's wage. It's, it's come full circle. And uh, the thing I'd say is, is that I feel better now than what I did 10 years ago. Uh, you know, I think this side of it, it you're talking about 1-2% gain in your performance. The, the football's the main thing, but diet is now coming more and more into it. And particularly as you get older, diet is so important. You've got to maintain your body shape, your body weight. And uh, football is so fast and athletic and, and uh, intense now that uh, every, every little every little percentage counts. It's called marginal gain. And uh, for me, diet is massively important. And as players, are you aware of how important diet is now and how important it is to look after yourself? Yeah, I think not just in football, not just in professional sport. I think in society now, there's a there's, there's a massive uh, upturn in. Uh, Campaigns. Yeah, every magazine you read now, there's, there's there's weight plans, there's diet, there's diets to do, there's fitness regimes. I think it's the way that football and and, and society is going, where people want it to be healthier. You know, you, you look at you know 20 years ago, uh, you know it was people just ate in a certain way and and exercised in a certain way. I think obviously now medicines come on so much, and you can live longer now by looking after yourself and. Uh, it's great. I feel just a final one. I'm looking ahead um, at your time at Everton. Um, are, do, do you think you can play? I know you said recently you think yeah. you can play on for another two to three years. Is, is that very much your aspirations? Well, that, that's uh, it's always been my aspirations to play as long as I possibly can. Uh, you know, I love playing for Everton at the moment, but you know, I've, I've got four or five months left on my contract, so uh, the aim is to play on next season. Uh, and uh, you know, to do that, I've got to maintain fitness and health and uh, my form. And to do that, I've got to do the little things like diet, like fitness, uh, and work at it. And uh, you know, hopefully, I can play for another. You know, I see Ryan Giggs and I see Paul Scholes playing, and they're two years above me, two years ahead of me, and uh, it gives me inspiration. Thanks, Phil. That's great. Uh,